What does it feel like to die and come back to life? Well, you may have to ask these convicted felons who strangely seem to have escaped execution. Although not all these people literally came back to life after being pronounced dead, some of their stories are also as strange. Join us today as we look at 12 death row convicts who survived and what happened next. Number 12, Will Purvis. We begin this very, very strange journey in a little place known as Mississippi, not the river, the state. This story is that of a man named Will Purvis, who was part of a group known as the White Caps. Now, this group had foundations similar to the Ku Klux Klan, which means they were pretty racist, and they weren't afraid to show it. Purvis was a proud member of this crew, unknown to him that things would soon take a dark turn. In 1894, Purvis was arrested for the death of a man named Will Buckley. Things weren't looking so good. Even though he kept affirming his innocence, nobody paid him a listening ear. Everybody needed a scapegoat for the murder, and Purvis seemed to fit the picture. Even though there wasn't enough convincing evidence to convict him, Purvis was sentenced to death by hanging. Did he deserve such a cruel punishment? We cannot say, but the jury and the rest of the residents were about to witness a surprise they never prepared for. As his sentence was handed to him, Purvis scorned the jurors, saying that he would live longer than the lot of them in his own words. Was that a threat or was it a prophecy? You'll find out soon enough. As the stage was set for the execution of this man, who had just been convicted of killing his fellow man, everyone anticipated the moment when the world would be rid of at least one menace to the society. But what the crowd wasn't prepared for was the noose loosening on his neck as he was about to be hung. Was this a sign from God that this guy was maybe a teeny tiny little bit innocent? The people seemed to think so. Purvis was immediately taken back to prison, and the execution was canceled. He, however, remained in prison until December 20, 1898, when he was pardoned. Even when he was free, Purvis maintained that he was innocent of the crimes for which he was supposed to be killed. Nobody believed him back then, but everyone was about to be treated to a very rude shock. They say when a man is on his deathbed, his life flashes before his eyes. Maybe this was what prompted a man named Joe Beard to finally come forward and identify the killer as another man named Louis Thornhill as he battled for his last breaths. This was in 1970, many, many years after Purvis's life could have ended for a crime he didn't commit. Unfortunately, Louis Thornhill was never brought to justice, as he had died years before the confession was made. Finally, Purvis was exonerated, and he wore this acquitted badge with honor. He was also given $5,000 in restitution for having been wrongly accused and convicted. Now here's the spooky part of this story. William Purvis died on October 13, 1938 at the age of 66. This might seem like an ordinary date to you, but get this. The last of the jurors died just three days before Purvis died. Prophecy? We'll leave that for you to decide. Number 11, Joseph Samuel. Now, this story might be a little bit less spooky than the story of William Purvis, but it's still quite strange nonetheless. This time around, we travel way back to 1745, when this German troublemaker was convicted of armed robbery and subsequently sentenced to transportation to Australia in 1801. What a weird sentence, right? Well, that's another story we don't want to go into now. Anyway, Samuel was one of the 297 convicted felons who were packed aboard the vessels Nile, Canada, and Menorca. At the time, Britain then maintained a penal settlement at Sydney Cove in the colony of and New South Wales. This place was so secure, as the guards believed that any prisoner who tried to escape would be swallowed by the Australian wilderness. So there was no getting out of this one. But this wasn't going to stop Joseph Samuel. He wasn't just a criminal. He was a criminal mastermind. He, along with a gang, then went right back into the life of crime that got him into trouble in the first place. Their first operation was targeted at the home of a wealthy woman. Unfortunately, during the robbery, things took a dark turn, and what was supposed to be a hitchless robbery ended in the death of Joseph Luker, the policeman who was guarding the home. As you would expect, the name of Joseph Samuel shot up to the top of the wanted list. Before long, he and his gang were hunted down and captured. Samuel's problem was compounded when a woman at the trial identified him as one of the criminals. 
However, he maintained his innocence. He accepted that he had indeed participated in the robbery, but he had no hand in the killing of the policeman. But things took a very, very strange turn, when after the trial, all the other members of the gang were acquitted of their crimes, except for Joseph Samuel. He was about to pay for the sins of every single one of them as the court ordered him to be executed by hanging. It was his cross now, and he had to bear it. September 26, 18. 03 was a dark and gloomy day for Joseph Samuel. Even though the sun shone bright and high in the sky, the heavy dark clouds that hung upon his heart could not allow him to see the light at the end of this tunnel. If he saw any light at all, it was the radiance of the angels as they beckoned him to finally cross over to the other side. But it was not to be. This was not the day. As the executioners tried to execute Samuel along with some other convicted criminals, everyone else died of slow strangulation, but death had annulled his contract with Samuel, and the rope kept snapping, dropping the man to his feet. The executioner was stunned, but he was not about to be defeated by a common criminal. Immediately, he prepared another rope, and this time he made sure it was tightly secured around Samuel's neck. But it slipped right off his neck again, and Samuel fell right to the ground. At this point, the crowd couldn't just keep on watching, and instantly there was a solidarity movement to rescue this man. Maybe he was really innocent, and this was a sign from God. After consulting with the governor, everyone agreed that Samuel must have indeed been innocent, and he was immediately released as a free man. What a strange story, right? What comes next is even stranger. Number 10. John Babacombe Lee some people are famous for leading revolutions, some are famous for creating ingenious inventions, but some people find their fame in the strangest form. One of such men is John Henry George Babacombe Lee, a man who became famous after he survived not one, not two, but three execution attempts. What did he do that was so bad that he had to face capital punishment? Well, this man was not a saint at all. Born on August 15, 1864, in Abbotskirswell, Devon, Lee spent a bit of time in the Royal Navy, but that was about the only noble thing he was known for. What everyone really knew Lee for was the fact that he was a thief. It wasn't really a hidden fact. But he took his criminal ways up a notch in 1885 when he was convicted of the murder of his employer, Emma Keyes. Authorities claimed Lee had murdered Keyes with a knife in her home at Babacombe Bay near Torquay on November 15, 1884. Now it was time for retribution, and he would pay the ultimate price for all his crimes. However, as the trials progressed, it was obvious that the state just wanted to make a scapegoat out of Lee. The evidence against him was merely coincidental, but due to the fact that he had an extensive criminal record, everyone believed he did it. He cried out, claiming he was innocent, but all his cries fell upon deaf ears. But the universe must have been listening to his pleas, because as the executioner tried to hang him on February 23, 1885, the trapdoor of the scaffold refused to open. Even though it had been well tested by the executioner James Barry before the proceedings started, it kept failing over and over. Eventually, the medical examiner decided that he couldn't continue with the execution, and it was canceled. He was subsequently returned to prison, but he kept petitioning successive home secretaries for his release. In 1907, Lee was eventually released from prison, but the story of his failed hanging still remains a mystery till today. Number 9. Alva Campbell how long does a prisoner typically stay on death row? Well, the details of capital punishment in the United States are pretty complicated, but we'll try to explain it in the simplest way possible. You see, many people believe that once a criminal is handed the death sentence, he is expected to be put to death in, let's say, a couple of months. But this isn't the case. In reality, many people on death row can be incarcerated for decades as they await their demise. Throughout this period, many of them file several appeals as they attempt to overturn their sentences. Sometimes they win, and sometimes they lose. This man right here, Alva Campell, is one of those criminals who spent decades on death row. In his own case, two straight decades, actually. This brutal criminal was well known in his heyday for a string of criminal activities. This included multiple kidnappings, assaults, the non-fatal shooting of a state trooper, two murders, and way too many robberies and burglaries to count. Now you see why Campbell was considered the worst of the worst. By the time justice would eventually be served, 20 years after his 1997 conviction, Campbell, who was now 69 years old, was frail and nearing his death. But it wasn't the ghost of times past that haunted this man, but a host of illnesses that mysteriously invaded his body, including lung cancer, prostate cancer, obstructive pulmonary disease, respiratory failure, and severe pneumonia. He relied on a colostomy bag and needed oxygen treatments for 
four times a day, but there would be no mercy for this ruthless murderer. On November 15, 2017, Campbell was scheduled to finally be executed by lethal injection. Unfortunately, due to the worsening state of his health, the execution personnel could not find a vein for the IV line. After four botched attempts that took more than an hour, the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction Director Gary Moore immediately stopped the execution. Campbell was also granted a temporary reprieve, much to the dismay of the families of the victims. Campbell eventually died from complications arising from his many, many illnesses on March 3, 2018. Number 8. Anne Green This story you are about to witness is one of the strangest occurrences ever recorded in history. The story of Anne Green is a testament to the extreme case of classism that existed way back in the early days of modern civilization. Unfortunately, it still exists till today. Follow us back to 1650, the year Anne Green, who was an English domestic servant, was accused of committing infanticide. Let's trace this story back to the very beginning. Anne Green was born in Steeple Barton, Oxfordshire in 1628. As she grew into adulthood, she took up employment as a scullery maid in the house of a man named Sir Thomas Reed, a justice of the peace, who lived in Duns too. At 22, Green claimed to have been seduced by the grandson of Sir Thomas Geoffrey Reed, who was about 16 or 17 years old. As the relationship between the two blossomed, Anne Green became pregnant, although she was not aware. This was the beginning of the worst days for Anne Green, which totally altered the course of her life. It was when she had a miscarriage after 17 weeks of pregnancy that she realized she had been pregnant all along. No wonder she had been feeling the way she had been feeling for so many days now. After the miscarriage, Green knew she would be accused of intentionally murdering the fetus, so she tried to get rid of it. But the authorities soon found out, and Green was dragged before the court. A mountain load of evidence supported the fact that Green was not even aware of the fact that she was pregnant but the court couldn't be bothered. Under the concealment of birth of Bast asterisk asterisk DS Act of 1624, Green was sentenced to death for the murder and concealment of her illegitimate child. Even though she was obviously innocent of the crimes, her sentencing was basically motivated by the fact that she was a lowly servant who had seduced the son of her employer. On December 14, 1650, Green was scheduled to be hanged at Oxford Castle. Per her own request, several of Green's friends pulled at her legs to make her death faster. A soldier even struck her a couple of times with the butt of his musket to expedite her death. After about half an hour of hanging, everyone believed Green was dead. She was immediately cut down, and her body was donated to the University of Oxford for medical studies. But as the physicians prepped her body to be dissected, they discovered something really, really unsettling. This woman, who everyone thought was dead, was indeed very much alive. Although her pulse was faint and her breathing weak, she was still alive, and that was all that mattered. The group of physicians eventually revived Green, and within one month, she had survived. There was one other issue, though. Green had no recollection whatsoever of her execution, which was very, very strange. Authorities later pardoned her and exonerated her of her crimes, as they believed the hands of God himself had rescued her from death. Number 7. Rommel Broom Now on to something more recent. This is the chilling tale of Rommel Broom, an American death row inmate who escaped death back in 2009. Let's dig this story right from the root so you can have a good understanding of how we got here in the first place. Rommel Broom was an African-American man born in Muskegon, Michigan on June 4, 1956. At the age of five, Broom moved in with his mother in Ohio. From a very young age, it was obvious that Broom would be very notorious. He found himself in the arms of the law many, many times as a juvenile and was repeatedly committed to the Ohio Youth Commission. In order for you to understand the gravity of his crimes, here are a few examples. On October 25, 1974, Broom and accomplice entered a man's car. Then they robbed him at gunpoint and forced him out of the car. That's not all. On January 11, 1975, Broom committed one of the most heinous crimes in his criminal career. He sexually abused a 12-year-old girl who was babysitting his niece. Do you need more examples to understand how depraved the morality of this man was? His evil deeds eventually led him to prison, where he served a sentence of 7 to 25 years. But luck was on his side, and he was released on parole on May 11, 1984. 
Once he was out of prison, Broom continued to unleash his menace on many more victims. But everything reached its peak on September 21, 1984, when this ravenous criminal abducted, sexually abused, and murdered 14-year-old Trina Middleton as she walked home with two of her friends in East Cleveland, Ohio. But he still kept evading arrest. That wouldn't be for long. On December 6, 1984, Broom once again attempted to kidnap and assault an 11-year-old girl by the name of Melinda Grissom. But Grissom interrupted the abduction attempt by holding on to the car while screaming for help. Eventually, Grissom was able to escape, but the eyewitnesses had noted his license plate. He was eventually arrested, charged, and sentenced to death for numerous crimes, including aggravated murder. His execution was scheduled for September 15, 2009, but this man had one more show to perform before he left the earth. As the execution proceeded, the executioners tried and failed for two hours to maintain an IV line through which the lethal drugs would be administered. The first execution was canceled and rescheduled the execution for March 16, 2022. This was after many campaigns against his execution, many reschedules, and many rejections by the court. Finally, this man was going to pay for his many, many crimes. But Broom eventually died from suspected COVID-19 complications at the Franklin Medical Center in Columbia. Columbus, Ohio on December 28, 2020. Thus ended the story of this callous murderer. Number 6. William Duell. Here's another story that might seem like it was pulled out of an Halloween thriller, but in fact, it is a very real story. Back in 1740, a man by the name of William Duell was sentenced to death for being an accessory to the assault of one Sarah Griffin in Acton, London, England. He, along with four other criminals, were scheduled to be hung on November 24, 1740. But nobody was prepared for the scenes that were about to unfold. As the executioner fixed the ropes on the necks of these convicted criminals, it was just another day on the job for him. But Duell was about to undergo an experience that would continue to astound many for hundreds of years. Every single one of the executed criminals died. Well, except for one. You see, after the executioner had allowed the criminals to hang for 20 minutes, it was determined that he was definitely dead as a dodo. His body was cut down alongside his fellow felons and transported to the anatomy theater at the worshipful company of barbers and surgeons to be used for surgical training. Just like the story of the lady we talked about earlier, the physicians found out that Duell was still very much alive as they prepped him for dissection. They immediately began the process to save his life, and after just two hours of treatment, he was even able to sit up. Here's where another strange part comes in. According to Duell, who claimed to have been battling with a fever and delirium during the execution, he had no recollection of the events whatsoever. This was very, very strange and baffled everyone at the time. But Duell was not set free. Instead, he was sent straight back to prison the following day. His sentence was, however, changed to penal transportation, and he was banished to North America for life. He eventually lived the rest of his life in Boston, and was even alive to witness the American Revolution. Duell was reported to have died somewhere around 1805. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. We know you're itching for more strange and epic tales, but before we go on, here's our subscriber's pick for today. There has been an ongoing debate on the fate of prisoners who survive execution attempts. Although the techniques and technologies used in these processes have evolved over time, and such events are pretty uncommon, many still wonder what the proper thing to do in such scenarios would be. Should they be released back into society? Should their executions be reattempted? Should capital punishment even be a thing in our modern society today? As usual, argue away in the comments section. We love to hear from you. Now let's get back to more weird stories. Number 5. Konstantin Feoktistov if you thought all the stories we have talked about earlier in this video were bizarre, you should see what comes next. This one comes out of World War II, when Voronezh was occupied by Nazi Germany. While most people know Konstantin Feoktistov by his cosmonaut exploits with the Russian Space Administration, there is one more thing that remains very notable in the story of this man, and that was his brush with death much earlier in his life. Feoktistov was just 16 years old when Germany invaded his homeland of Voronezh in Russia. It was in the hands of the Nazis that this man went through one of the most traumatic experiences in his life. Due to the fact that Feoktistov was working as a scout for the Soviet army at the time of the invasion, he was captured by the Germans. 
and was subsequently sentenced to death by firing squad. These guys didn't even consider the fact that he was just 16 years old and had his life ahead of him, he was just mercilessly sentenced. But luck would be on his side, and the only bullet that hit him would only screed past his neck. But he wasn't going to let the Germans know he was still alive, they'd just shoot him at point-blank range. So what did he do? Well, Feoktistov decided to act like he was dead, and his executioners bought it. He later escaped from a burial trench and went on to live a long, fulfilling life. Number 4. Willie Francis. Ready for another spine-chilling story? We've got you covered. This next story, however, is more rooted in racial injustice, a problem which still persists in our society till today. Back in 1945, Willie Francis, who was just 16 years old at the time, was sentenced to death by the state of Louisiana. Why, you ask? Well, according to officials, Francis was responsible for the murder of Andrew Thomas, a Cajun pharmacy owner in St. Martinville, under whom Francis was once employed. Was this a case of a disgruntled employee gone rogue? The court seemed to think so at the time, and even though serious investigations were not conducted at the time, Francis was sentenced to death by the electric chair. Even though Willie Francis was name-dropping everyone who he believed was connected to the murder, the police just ignored him like he was a ghost. But that's not even the worst part of his trial. His lawyer, who should have fought tooth and nail to establish his innocence, simply agreed with every single thing the prosecution said. So, it was obvious that this trial had been sabotaged from the very beginning. On the day of his first execution attempt, May 3, 1946, witnesses reported hearing the teenager scream, Take it off! Take it off! Let me breathe! as the portable electric chair was turned on. But apparently the task of setting up the execution machine was assigned to a drunk man, and he set it up improperly. That was how this young boy was able to escape death. Victory for the innocent? Not really. After the botched execution, Francis filed an appeal to the Supreme Court to overturn his death sentence. But as you would expect, his pleas fell on deaf ears. He was eventually executed on May 9, 1947. He was just 18. The story of Willie Francis remains a vocal campaign point for many movements who call for reforms in the judicial system and more justice than racial bias in our courts. Number 3. Doyle Lee Ham. Once again, we find ourselves back in recent history as we recount the bizarre details of Doyle Lee Ham's failed execution. But what did this man do? And why was the state hell-bent on getting rid of him? To understand this story, let us go to the very beginning. This is Doyle Ham, a resident of Alabama who was convicted of the murder of Partick Cunningham. Cunningham's death had resulted from a robbery gone wrong. After a trial, Ham was sentenced to death. While he awaited his fate on death row, Ham developed lymphatic cancer. This would eventually play a huge role in how his execution was carried out. On December 13, 2017, Ham's execution date was set for February 22, 2018. But when the day arrived, Ham was stabbed a half dozen times as the members of the execution team tried to find the perfect vein to transmit the lethal drugs. By the time they realized the execution wasn't really going to work out, they eventually called it off. A second execution attempt was also botched by many protests and lawsuits. On November 28, 2021, Ham died in prison. Cause of death? Cancer. So the story of another callous criminal ended. Number 2. Kenneth Eugene Smith If there's anything you should know about living a life of crime, it's that no matter how much you run, the long arms of the law will eventually catch up with you. After spending many years on death row, many prisoners eventually begin to nurture the belief that they may actually be able to escape capital punishment. Kenneth Eugene Smith was convicted in 1980 and sentenced to death. His crimes, the contract killing of a preacher's wife. According to compelling evidence, Smith had received a sum of $1,000 from Reverend Charles Sennett to murder his wife, Elizabeth Sennett. Now that's really, really cold. But why did he do such a terrible thing? Apparently, the Reverend was neck deep in debt and was hoping he'd make a quick buck with the insurance payout. But the weight of the guilt on his neck must have been super heavy since he ended up taking his own life just a week after his wife was murdered per his request. In 1996, Smith was sentenced to death despite the fact that a jury voted 11 to 1 to reduce his sentence to a life imprisonment. But in November 2022, his execution attempt was botched as the lethal injection process was significantly hampered. His execution was stayed for a while, but now the state of Alabama is ready to use this man as a lab rat for the nitrogen hypoxia execution process, a method of execution that has not been tested on anyone yet. Number 1. 
John Smith. Finally, we end our journey through the bizarre history of botched execution attempts in London, 1705. Follow us into the courtroom which sat on the case of this criminal who went by the name John Smith. On December 5, 1705, Smith was accused and convicted of housebreaking. Too much? Well, that depends on who you ask. Unlike most criminals who would break down on hearing their sentences, Smith remained astute and unbothered about his impending death. As if to add more dramatic effects to his execution, the judge ordered that it be carried out on Christmas Eve. He was eventually taken to Tyburn's gallows, where he was scheduled to be hanged. Several family members and friends were present at the execution of this man. On one side, many people were glad to finally be rid of his menace, but on the other side, his family and friends mourned the impending loss of their dear son, brother, and friend. But this guy wasn't planning on going anywhere yet. The execution proceeded as planned, but this man refused to give up the ghost. Some people even tugged at his feet in order to make the process quicker and alleviate his sufferings, but nothing seemed to work. Eventually, the crowd began to show for a reprieve, and this time it was granted. Smith was cut down and went on to make a full recovery from the botched execution attempt. After he was released, following a string of weird and unexplainable events, Smith went straight back into his life of crime. He was eventually rearrested on May 17, 1727 during one of his housebreaking attempts. He was then sentenced to transportation to Virginia. He eventually died somewhere after 1727 under unknown circumstances. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.